Welcome to the closing session of our forum. And since it's Friday afternoon, I'll not elaborate on the excellent panels we've had, but immediately announce the closing speech, which will be delivered by the Deputy Director General at DG Ampel. Please welcome Ms. Andriana Sukova. <laughs> keep the applause rolling until she's at the lectern to keep the energy high in the room on Friday afternoon. Yes, 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 yes. Well, <laughs> uh, I think everybody needs some more energy. I'll try to be brief in 10 minutes, no more. But uh, first, uh, I would like to address everybody who is here, and I understand more than 400 people are patient enough, still online. Uh, and I'm delighted and also honored to conclude the second edition of the European Employment and Social Rights Forum on behalf of our Director General for Employment, Social Affairs and Inclusion. And I'm, it's a tradition, I'm closing last year, I'll close this year, so next year you bear with me as well. <laughs> <laughs> this forum is our largest event dedicated to the work that is done in our DG and I think it has been also a very good achievement and a very rich discussion in the last two days. First, I want to thank everyone for your very active participation. Then I want to announce that we had more than 3,000 registrations, which means that the relevance of this forum is very, very broadly and widely recognized by our partners and stakeholders. And I believe that the t topic of the forum also attracted attention because talking about the impact of artificial intelligence on the world of work is something that is inevitably touching everybody's life. I want to thank our commissioner, Nicola Schmidt, who was here yesterday, but also he joined one of the panel sessions uh, this, af this afternoon for his presence and for his support in organizing the events and inviting speakers. We had in total, in the last two days, 22 sessions featuring the perspectives and the expertise of 70 speakers with a very good gender balance, and reinforced our commitment that technological advancements must not come at the expense of workers' rights. To achieve this, we need the right regulatory framework and we need the right policies, and this is the task for DG Employment. During the discussion on the first day of the forum yesterday, we saw that artificial intelligence will change jobs, but not eliminate them. We must keep, keep people at the heart of artificial intelligence, backed by strong social support systems, which is a recognized strength of Europe. We also all agreed that soft skills remained important, which artificial intelligence will unlikely be able to substitute. This morning, we had the presence of the Commissioner for Internal Market, Thierry Breton, who welcomed us with a big picture on artificial intelligence in Europe, and he also indicated some of the challenges that are still ahead of Europe. We held a session on the implications of algorithmic management at work, and the panelists agreed about including all relevant parties in designing technology for a win-win outcome. Trade unions should also be involved before employers introduce artificial intelligence in the workplace, and we're very happy that this point was coming up from uh, representatives of employers as well. We started a session or a round of parallel sessions this afternoon, and uh, in the first round, we had the session on Europe's employment and social developments, presenting our latest report where uh, addressing labor and sh skills shortages, recognized uh, or admittedly by everyone, require not only skills development, but also improving working conditions. So this is something that we should be working on. The session on social economy and social innovation conveyed a clear message. Use artificial intelligence responsibly without forgetting the human touch. The session on exploring the role of data and artificial intelligence at work brought to light issues of transparency, compliance, and societal impact. Finally, the session on digital skills in the context of European Year of Skills emphasized the importance of making technologies accessible to all, including persons with disabilities, and providing continuous learning. The second set of parallel sessions 
we had uh, the session on future-proofed social policies aligned with European Pillar of Social Rights, where we explored strategies for addressing Europe's demographic challenges. In the artificial intelligence and fair mobility session, member states integrating artificial intelligence into social security will be a challenge for everyone, but also we discussed the practical case, uh, cases like chatbox, chatbots. The speakers have divergent views on legal challenges in the session about co-designing workplace algorithms, and some saw insufficient legal protection for workers, while others stressed the excessive legislative burden, so which may hinder competitiveness. Meanwhile, the session on investing in people in Ukraine highlighted Ukraine's efforts in employment and social fields, and uh, there was the signature of a memorandum of understanding between the European Training Foundation and the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development in supporting Ukraine in its transition, in its reconstruction without delay. The final round of parallel sessions featured experts from European institutions, research centers, industry leaders. So the session on the drivers of labor shortages, the discussion highlighted the importance of aligning education and training for the skills needed in the labor market especially in the context of artificial intelligence. The session on workplace discrimination with artificial intelligence stressed the need for safeguards, such as the ones outlined in the proposed Artificial Intelligence Act. The focus in the session on poverty and inequality proofing policies focused on developing policies driven by data. And lastly, the session on the future of European funds called for social cohesion and also confirmed that cohesion is an objective for all policies and synergies among different funding tools should be ensured. Also competition and inclusion should be at the heart of cohesion investments. As we close this forum, I'm optimistic about the transformative power of artificial intelligence if used responsibly. The insights and proposed solutions gathered from those past two days will shape our progressive EU strategies and policies. Looking ahead, we will carry forward these enriched conversations in the next Commission's mandate. On a personal note, I cannot miss to mention that, as announced yesterday, our Director General, Jost Korte, is leaving. We started the farewell parties yesterday. They will continue until the 19th of December, and uh, I can only recognize that we started together on the 1st of March, 1918. Uh, no, 1918, oh. <laughs> I'm tired, sorry. On the 1st of March, 2018, we started as a team in DG Employment, and I can tell you that uh, it's been an amazing experience of five and a half years, where working with Jost as a mentor and a colleague was an amazing experience, really, uh, for me, that's a big loss. But I'm retiring in four years' time, so I'll manage somehow. Uh, but I wish all the best to Jost, and I hope that he'll enjoy much uh, life before the world of work, uh, beyond the world of work. I have to stop now. I'm really tired. <laughs> Looking at the future, I just want to share that I'm remaining optimistic because Pepper yesterday uh, told us that humanoid artificial intelligence run robots do not want to replace us humans because we are unique, and that's a true. That's really something that we should not forget. And uh, I'm looking forward for more fruitful exchanges in any other fora, but next year we'll have another big gathering here and uh, organize um, our discussions so that we shape up the future of pol policy making, the future of our cooperation with those stakeholders and partners to the benefit of all Europeans. And before I finally close, I want to thank the technicians. Despite any hiccups, I know technology and techniques are always a challenge. I want to thank silent interpreters because that's also a very important element of our work if we want to be inclusive, if we want to communicate broadly and widely to everyone. And I want to thank the team of Unit A1, A2, which is our communication unit, which really put a lot of efforts, a lot of work in organizing this event, and I want to applaud them. Thank you very much.
Madam Sukova, thank you very much for your closing remarks. All that needs to be said is to reiterate some thanks where it is due. I thank all the moderators, the interpreters, the velotypists, the sign language interpreters. I thank, of course, all the excellent speakers, all the staff, the tech team, including the organizing contractor. I thank the commission team for organizing this wonderful event, also on my personal behalf for the collaboration the past weeks. And I thank all of you, ladies and gentlemen, on-site as well as online for your participation. Please join us for a closing reception in the Riverside area. Thank you very much.